<laughs> Good morning, my relatives. You are tuned in to the CHE 411 program. My name is Audrey German, and with me is Linda Obego Nicola and Gypsy Wana, and we're from the Community Health Education Program. Um, <clears throat> today, we wanted to visit a little bit. We'll go back over last week. We talked about uh, mini or water and how important it is to our overall health. And I told a story about a kushi that had every morning when they would wake up, she'd take her to Kojapi down to the creek. And she would give them that first drink of water to break their fast. And she shared with them that that water is sacred, <clears throat> that we need it to live. And so um, we talked about how, how our whole body and our mind and our, our brain is made up of, the majority of it is water, and that when we're... Um, dehydrated or when we are not getting enough water that it can affect you know our um, how we think and our ability to focus so that so today we're bringing you information about um, how we think and how you know we use our thoughts to um, define our reality for every day and so this week we've had uh, Sanford Health they did some presentations on mindfulness and so one of the things about mindfulness the definition is the state of being aware of something or a state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment. And so we talked a lot about how we think about things and how, um, how it really shapes our, our reality and how sometimes when we worry or we have stress or we have anxiety that um, it takes away from our present moment and really enjoying right now. You know, because sometimes worry, we can't do anything about that. You know, it's out of our control, but it, it's taking away our happiness for this moment. And so when we think about mindfulness, you know, we thought about how do, how do our thoughts really affect us? And so Gypsy was going to share a little bit about some of the things that she had um, uh, experienced and maybe some of the things that she wants to share about how our, how our thoughts kind of, um, how we can um, think about things. Okay. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about self-talk. Um, I think we all do it. We're like our own worst critic, you know, condemning ourselves and criticizing everything we do or how we look, what we say. Um, and that negative um, self-talk, the negative thoughts we have about ourselves affects how we, how we behave. It affects our attitudes. Um, and it, it affects also how we may respond to certain situations. And um, and I just learned all of this through counseling. So, you know, if you really want to learn more, go to counseling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, wanna, I had some examples. And I'm going to read the examples of a positive self-talk and a negative self-talk thought. And, you know, think about it and see how, how you feel, what it makes you think of. So here's like a first example. Like we're going... Um, and this would be the show, too. Mm -hmm. So, like, here's the first example. What an idiot! I really screwed up that presentation. Well, that's the end of my job. And then, if you have a more positive thought process, you could think, I can do better than that. I'll prepare and rehearse more next time. Maybe I'll get some more public speaking training. So, which one's... Did you like? I mean, I already feel like icky when I listen to that, what an idiot I am, because you're just really putting yourself down, and we don't need to be doing that. We have, life is hard enough without us beating up ourselves over it. And a lot of times we're criticizing ourselves worse than anybody else would do for us. Like if it's, especially if it's a constructive criticism, we're still even worse on ourselves. Um, so there's just <clears throat> some things, but, you know, if you, if you have um, trouble with that or if you have anything, there's a way to, to get started on changing your thought process. And it's not always easy because sometimes I'll still catch myself, you know, cutting myself down. Um, but you just, you know, just practice. Everything takes practice and it takes time. But some things you could do to get started on changing that would be spend a few days, you know, listening to yourself, listening to what your thoughts are, what you're talking about with yourself, you know, as you're thinking. Um, and make note of what they are, if they're positive, if they're negative. Um, would you say those things to somebody else, to like a loved one, a kid or a child, um, you know, your parents or grandparents? Um, and then just, you know, think about them. And as you're thinking through them, ask yourself the following questions, like, are you overreacting? Um, is it really that big of a deal? Is it important in the long run? 
Um, am I overgeneralizing or do, am I lab labeling myself too harshly? Um, so those are just, just some ideas. It's not everything, all, all of it. But then once you realize how your thoughts mostly are, if they're mostly negative, mostly positive, then you can switch gears and start working on that more. And if you already have positive self-talk, great. Don't switch to negative self-talk. Keep it positive. And then um, I guess um, I guess that's it I have for the the um, self-talk. Um, just that it, it really has an effect on your attitude and your, your whole outlook on life. And um, you may find that you don't want to really be around people because you're just like, oh, that person's always negative. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just, you know, like what you just said, a bit of bad energy or good energy and stuff. So... Um, hopefully somebody finds that helpful and that's it thanks and, and I think that's the one thing you know when we when we were learning about mindfulness is that to not judge you know anything that you know to be present in the moment and to not judge anything that you might be uh, feeling or even thinking mm -hmm. you know like sometimes we have those negative thoughts and sometimes we can think oh we're a bad person because we had that negative thought but I think it's just accepting accepting things as they are because I think once we can accept it and we can acknowledge it, then we're able to, to, to move on from it. You know, and um, I think about even like in our thoughts, um, when, we're, when we're up against something and we can think about how difficult it is. And, and sometimes we avoid a lot of situations just because we think it's gonna be so hard. And then sometimes when we're, when we're able to get through it, it we're, we're always surprised that you know, I was able to do that. You know, there's a young girl that last night I was at my um, Tekoja, her uh, gymnastics meet. It's the last one for the year. And there's a little girl in there that's been through so many hard things in her life. Just so much um, health things. And there she was in front of all those people. And she was performing. And I just thought, if people knew what she'd been through, and here she is. Mm -hmm. And I imagine she was afraid. But she pushed through that fear because she likes doing what she's doing, you know. And I just, I that kind of courage is just makes me feel like, what keeps me back, you know? When when a little person like that, a young girl, can just push through that and just have that courage to to be out like that, mm -hmm. it's just really amazing, you know. And, and and thinking about that, everything that we do, you know, every hard experience, there's always something positive that comes from it, and we just got to look for it. Um, we know in our life that there's always going to be hard things. You could be living the perfect life, but there's always going to be something difficult that's going to come, and we're going to have to face it. And we can avoid it, but that doesn't make it go away. You know, we have to be able to face it. And, and when we face it uh, with that courage, we, we're always surprised about how much we can, we can handle. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, Linda, I know you, you talked about um, some of the things that your mom taught you, you know, as you grew up and how it helped you in your life. Uh, well, Mindaki, some of the things I'm going to say are really kind of personal, but I really want to share them because I know there's hundreds of others who have probably experienced the same things I have to a certain degree, but um, at one point in time, I remember there used to be this commercial on depression and if, you know, they'd name all the stuff and you you know, you're tired or scared or whatever, and then the more I watched that commercial, the more of those examples I could check off. So I went to go to Behavior Health years ago, and, and we talked, and come to find out I was depressed because uh, I was worrying, stressed, my life, you know. And as a woman, and we all do that, we try to take care of everybody and everything, and we leave ourselves behind. Mm -hmm. But I had to face myself uh, and realize that I worried, you know, I was trying to overcompensate and take care of everybody. So I had to look at that, you know. And that's when I started turning towards realizing who I was and, and the courage and the strength that I needed to take care of myself. Not strength that I had, but strength that I could rely on. And then thereafter, you know, I started talking to myself. And then later on, of course, you know, I'm a three-time cancer survivor. So during that process, and even prior to having cancer, um, I had some other health issues, major health issues. So I, in order to start taking back some of that power to have some control of my life, 
I started talking to myself. Um, I even went as far as to get pictures of what the brain looks like, you know, what you look like on the inside, all your organs, <clears throat> and then finding out where the cancers were and visualizing that in my body. And then actually talking to that cancer or the sickness and saying, you know, you're with me now, so I'm going to respect you, but I'm going to heal. But I would sit and visualize each part of my body, my brain, the inside, and just talk talk to myself and thank it for thank my body myself for getting me through another day and for being, you know, to help me get through the day. And thanking each part of my body for helping each other, you know, to survive and to do what it needed to keep me going and to visualize each part of my body and making that connection because your body and your mind are so powerful especially your mind but your body gives you hints about anything that might be going on or going wrong and you need to pay attention to that you know your heart flutters you have a pain here um, you get dizzy you feel tired you know, look into those things. Uh, take care of yourself. There's many people that love you. But ultimately it was, you know, getting to know myself. And for me, the mindfulness, this really helped to reiterate that, is that in the mornings in order to, to have that balance, you know, you sit and you do breathing exercises. And through that, through that breathing, you know, you inhale not so much the outside, but who you are. You breathe in, you know, for me, I breathe in my goodness, and I exhale any negative thing I might have done or said to anybody. And that I always pray that I say the right words to help people. And this is just coming from being a mom and a grandma. My biggest fear is saying something that's going to hurt, you know, my family, my tapojas, my daughters. You know, so I, I really pray hard about that. And that's been an everyday thing because... I'm not the perfect person. I don't know everything. You know, I just have a love for my family and, and I try to do the best I can. <clears throat> but that's what that all comes down to, doing that in the, in the morning, you know, praying, making that connection with yourself and, you know, God or, you know, grandfather's spirit, you know, that's, you know, there's a plan for you in life. And you need to be ready for that on a daily basis who walks into the office that needs help, you know, mm -hmm. who needs to hear, you know, we care about you, you need to think about yourself, you need to go to the doctor, you know, diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, these are all things that these women share with you and, and they say it mean everything from the heart because they truly care about you and we truly want a healthy community. But now I'm getting off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> so I liked what you said about breathing, though, you know, because we know that, you know, when we're under stress, sometimes I'll notice even with myself that I'll, I'll even stop breathing a little bit or my breathing mm -hmm. becomes more shallow. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when, you, when, you're, when you're breathing like that, when you're breathing more shallow or maybe even you just kind of hold your breath, you're not getting the oxygen that you need to be able to think good and so that's a part of mindfulness too is to be able to breathe and um, sometimes when we're uh, we did some breathing exercises and um, it'd be nice if we could get those out on our on our um, Facebook page mm -hmm. see community health education has a Facebook page and so we'll put those breathing exercises out because um, they're really helpful in helping you to um, to focus and especially during stressful events or stressful times, you know, we really need to, to think about focusing and, and our breathing helps us do that. And so one easy one that I'll just share right now is that, you know, um, breathing in to a count of four and breathing out to a count of four. And uh, like Linda said, breathing in, thinking, breathing in all the goodness and then breathing out, you know, as you exhale, you know, thinking about the, maybe the things that you want to release, you know, um, helps in, in doing those breathing exercises. One more thing that I wanted to just mention is that a lot of people talked about their sleep and how stress and anxiety affects their sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, we hear that quite a bit. And um, so there's exercises for that too, and we'll just put that on our CHG Facebook page. But the one thing that I want to leave mm -hmm. with you, and I'm hoping that we said some things that maybe are um, will help you, but one of the things that I want to leave with you is that our people always believed 
in um, in took took uh, knowledge from our our, our um, all of nature. And one of the things that I found was on Brihemigia. And what that means is to make yourself strong. The Buffalo Nation goes against the wind, like how we can go against our problems. They show us not to run, but to stand strong, and that we are the Buffalo Nation. So I hope we had um, shared with you some things that you find helpful. We wish you a great week, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Drink lots of water. Do not smoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, make sure you buckle up every time you get in the vehicle. Yeah. Dokshta. Dokshta.